Hello everybody, this is Mr. Storm again. Uh, sorry about the background noise, my son's taking a shower. If we listen closely, we might even be able to hear him singing in there. Yeah, maybe not. Anyway, um, <clears throat> this is part three of my class, class, class craft tutorials. Um, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to modify the rules for the game so that you can kind of control... Uh, what actions give them XP, what actions take away HP, um, what happens when they die, what their abilities do, and all of those things. So it's pretty easy. Um, once you have a class built in your teacher view, if you go to the class and hover over these three dots here, it'll give you some options, right? So we have uh, settings, rules customizer, introduce, rules summary, and distribute codes. Um, I'm just going to go into settings here so I can show you what that menu looks like. First of all, I have students. I can modify my students or add new students. Um, I can import students from my Google Classroom uh, page if I already have them in there, or if I have a student database, if I've already put a bunch of students in Classcraft, I can use that. Um, I can manage teams uh, by moving students around and putting students where they need to be. I can pick options for my team, so I can name the team. I can pick a cool um, uh, emblem for the team, uh, and I can pick a background for the team screen. Parents, this is where we can invite all of our parents. Um, usually what I do is I just download the handouts, um, and that will allow me to give handouts to the parents. Um, I just give this to the student and say, hey, here's your, uh, here's your code to sign into Classcraft, and here's the code for your parents to sign in so they can track what you're doing. Um, I'll also send out an, I also send out emails to the parents to let them know, hey, this is how you uh, get in. Um, let's see. So that's all setting up the, the, uh, the students and parents stuff. Uh, let's talk about behaviors. So these are... Um, in here you can set the custom categories for behaviors for XP, health, or gold. Um, so for me, I'm, I'm in the middle of working on these. You can set values for however much you want. So let's say I want 100 XP for, um, you know, help, oh, hold on, helping another student in class, right? And then I just hit the checkbox or the check mark, and it becomes a new value that I can choose in the menu. Uh, for health points, um, we can take away HP for negative behavior. So uh, disrupting class, and I spelled that wrong. Let's use spell check. Disrupting. There we go. And then I can hit the check mark, and it creates a new uh health. And the same thing for gold. Um, for gold, I mainly use it. I give them extra gold for organizing their planner. Every day when they come in, they have to write down the objectives and the assignment that we're working on. And every two weeks or so, I check their planner. And if their planner looks nice and orderly, if it's organized properly, if they've written everything down, um, if they're using it for their other classes as well, that's something else I check for. I give them gold for doing that. Um, but I can give them gold for, you know, something else. So... Uh, bringing uh, candy to the teacher, right? If I want to have that be an option, I can do that. Now, let's say later on you decide, eh, I don't really want that anymore. Uh, I've got too much candy. You can go ahead and just delete. Okay, so that's how you set the behaviors in class. Let's talk about the powers. Now, the game is set up with three different classes. You have mages, you have warriors, and you have healers. Okay. And the way the balance of the game works is essentially this. The warrior is the person on the team that protects everyone else from taking damage. They have the most HP, but they also um, have abilities like Protect 1, which um, these Protect abilities allow them to absorb damage from their team. So let's say someone else on the team is going to take damage. The warrior can use Protect to take up to 10 damage of that damage instead of their teammate, receiving only 80% of the initial damage. And when they do that, uh, it costs AP and it gives them extra XP for being for helping out a teammate. So warriors are protectors. They kind of protect everybody else. The healer 
will heal other teammates. So let's say the warrior does his job, protects a bunch of damage. The healer can then go in and heal the warrior back up to full strength. Um, but that, again, uses AP, and it also gives them XP for helping out another teammate. And then the mage's job is to give AP to the rest of the team. So the mage has the most AP, and he can give AP to other players. So the warrior protects, the healer heals, and the mage gives AP. So let's talk about these powers individually. Um, for me, I kept the mana transfer ability the same, because that's a critical part in being a mage. But I changed some of these other abilities to be more, I guess, kind of related to my class. So teleport, it makes it so that they can, if they come in late to class, they'll still get a tardy. It'll still be tardy on the roll. Um, and they'll still receive, you know, whatever punishments come from that. But this will allow them to avoid taking damage in the game for being late. So they can cast that. Invisibility, um, they can avoid damage for disrupting class. Um, now, we, they can't just spam these abilities all day because they do cost AP. So they actually have to take a penalty in AP in order to use this. Um, Mana Shield, it prevents the loss of HP to themselves so they can protect themselves if, they're, if their warriors don't have uh, any AP left. Cheat Death, if a fallen teammate uh, dies, or if a teammate, uh, someone on their team dies, then the warrior or the, the mage can cast Cheat Death to re-roll the cursed die so that they that teammate can get a different punishment and i'll show you what those mean in just a minute time warp um, the mage can get two tries during a boss battle on a question so if they don't know the answer um, and they get it wrong they can use time warp to i guess essentially go back in time and give it another shot um, fountain of mana uh, as a teammate uh, any teammate who isn't a mage replenishes all of their ap clairvoyance if the random event for the day isn't something they enjoy they can re-roll the random event and mage circle uh it basically lets the whole class answer the uh the boss battle question for them if they don't know um and these are all custom values and the way you can customize these values is you just hit the little edit button and you can write in whatever you want it to be um they have default values, which some of them, again, didn't really work for me. Uh, so this one was all team members gain an extra eight minutes to beat an exam. I, I don't really have sit down and take tests kind of tests. Um, all of my classes are mainly, um, I guess, project based. So um, you have a longer project that you work on and turn in for your assessments as opposed to taking a test. So this one didn't really make sense for my class. So I changed it to something else. Um, Let's talk about the warrior. The warrior has its protect. Um, he also has first aid, which allows him to heal himself if, say, the mate or the the healer isn't uh, doesn't have enough AP. Uh, hunting allows them to get gold for every level they have, but they can only use it once per class period. Uh, there's another level of protect. Ambush. The warrior can hand in an assignment one day later without taking penalties. Counterattack. The warrior gets a hint on a question during a boss battle. Uh, protect three, the warrior can take 30 damage, uh, frontal assault, all team members can hand in an assignment one day later. So the entire team, uh, won't take penalties for handing in an assignment one day late. And then secret weapon, uh, basically gives them either two choices during a boss battle, or I can split the multiple choice answers in two for them. So that's them. And then healer, uh, basic healing, sainthood, they can reduce damage done to them. Um, just in case, you know, say the, the, um, the healer or the warrior doesn't have, um, uh, isn't wanting to protect them. They can reduce damage. Ardent faith. Um, they can ask if their question is correct. And if it's not, they can answer it again. Uh, heal two. um, Favor of the gods, reduce damage done to the healer by 20%. Revive. So if a player falls in battle, they can bring them back to life without penalty. Um, heal three healing circle. Everyone in the team gains 15 HP and then prayer, uh, during the boss battle, the healer can ask the game master, meaning the teacher to answer the question for them. All right. So, and you can customize all these abilities. My, my advice is when you customize these abilities, make sure there's something that's not going to be too overpower overpowered or imbalanced for the game. I like the way that mine have been set up. They're pretty easy to use and the it tends to 
make uh, each class kind of their own specific um, uh, have their own specific role in the game. Uh, and when I have the te the kids set up teams, I make sure there's at least one mage, one warrior, and one healer on each team. That way they can um, that way those students those teams can be balanced enough they can help each other out. Let's talk about sentences. So these are things that will happen to you if you die. So I have a couple of I, I have about ten of the things that could happen, um, and they're things like you lose a hundred gold or nothing happens to you, or you lose experience points, or things like that. And I try to give them this, you know, little bit of uh, fantasy-type flair. So, uh, in the darkness you hear a voice, Submit to me, and I can bring you back. You reluctantly submit. Your body picks itself off, up off the ground. You have returned, but you are now a soulless husk of your former self. Lose 500 experience points. Or, you know, uh, you throw a pocket of loose change at your attra attacker to distract them. Lose 50 gold pieces. You know, things like that. So I try to give them a little bit of flair so they're more interesting. So if you, if you, doll if, sorry, if you die in battle, then um, this it will randomly pick one of these and they have to take that punishment. But you can make new ones um, just by typing down here. Or you can edit the ones that are already there just by clicking the edit button. Random events. There are tons of random events in here, and you can make your own. I've made a couple of my own. The ones that they have already are pretty good, um, but these are things that uh, these are things that happen at the beginning of class every day. Um, so things like uh, the price of power. You drink poison, thinking it a mana potion, and the player on each team with the least AP loses 15 HP. Or it could be something um, awesome, like say or do something nice for your teacher today. Or uh, something silly, like, uh, where's the pirate one? Um, or this one's cool, Crazy DJ. The game master plays a song that's at least 15 years old. A random player will have to identify the artist or the song. If the student fails, she lose, he or she loses 15 HP. If the student guess both, guesses both, they gain two, 250. So that one's fun. I've, I've had some fun with that one. But these are just randomly going to happen during the game, or uh, when you start the game. Let's go into the advanced game rules. In here, you can set the amount of XP they need in order to level up. And what I've done with this is I essentially looked at all the events they could get XP for in the game, things that I could control, like assignments or boss battles. I figured out how much XP they would, normal, they would be able to get and how high of a level they would... Um, or how much XP that total would give you. And then 18, level 18 is the highest level in the game. And so I basically just divided that number by 18. So that by the end of the semester, they, if they do everything correctly, they should be able to get all the way to max level. You can set an HP regeneration so that every day they get, a, they get one HP um, put back into their health. Uh, you can do AP, so they replenish AP. Um, uh, all these things you can change. You can change everything in here about about the game. Down here, you can change the max HP and AP for each class. I like the default values. I've just I just kind of leave them alone. Uh, in interface, you can change sound effects, uh, background music. You can change. You can um, activate and disable game features. I've uh, these are kind of cool, but I don't really mess with them too much. Everything seems to work pretty well. You can import settings from another class. So if you have classes that you want to use, you can import those settings. You can archive characters, meaning the student no longer goes here, or um, you know you you want that character to go away and have the character have the student start with a new character, whatever you want. Um, but these are all options that you can choose as the teacher. Wow, and he is really singing. <laughs> anyway, so the, you can set up everything about the game and make all kinds of changes that you want. You can change the name of the class. You can invite other teachers into the game with you. So if maybe you teach a class with another teacher, you can invite teachers into the class. Um, let's see. By sharing class craft, you can make referrals, blah, 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 blah. Um, that's pretty much it for settings. There's really not much... Um, not much else to talk about in this category. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to set up class content. 
so that you can um, put lessons and things like that into Classcraft if that's something that you want to do. All right, thanks for watching.